first met Robert in uh, L.A. and um, I was working the New York Independent Film Festival out there. And uh, I was a huge fan of his work, and I still am. And uh, I'd written, wrote a magazine called uh, IFQ Magazine. Uh, and um, I, was, I, was, I was honored to meet him and, and, and to work with him. So basically I set up an interview with him. Uh, he flew out from L.A. to New York. And um, we did the interview, and, and, and during the interview, I, I felt this kind of uh, connection. And um, at the time, I'd, I'd written a, a short script called Never Down, and I something told me to just give it to him and just see what he thought about it. And I did, and I didn't really expect anything out of it, but um, he called me back the next day, offered to take me to lunch, and uh, we did, and we spoke about it, and I uh, basically broke it down to him like this, you know, I, I'm not, you know, very well financed, but I'll uh, I'll play I'll, I'll pay for your plane ticket. You know, fly you out here in New York. You, know, you can play the lead in this film. What do you think? And uh, he agreed, and he uh, told me what he thought about the script, and uh, he really did. Um, he was on the same page, and uh, basically we just uh, kept in communication through phone conversations in New York to LA, and uh, we just kept elaborating more and more on this idea, and. Uh, Got to the point where we were just like, fuck it, well, why make this a short? Let's let's do a feature, let's, let's make this a feature film. And uh, once he agreed, I, j I just went all out with uh, anyone that I could get into contact with uh, cast-wise. And um, we did it, you know, and here we are. Um, <clears throat> we both had the uh, similar kind of... Um, Influences. I, I grew up in maybe the mid to late 80s, early 90s, admiring films of that uh, generation. Um, you know, uh, we both worked with Abel, um, Abel Ferrara, um, who was very um, inspirational in, in uh, I think, both of our work. And, uh, you know, Robert was, was in a lot of his earlier work that I had seen growing up as a kid and, and really dug. Um, and my, my influences, uh, you know, uh, so many really, you know, George Romero, uh, Abel, uh, William Friedkin, Ralph Bakshi, um, basically what, what we as as Automatic 13 would like to accomplish is, is, is to put the independent back into independent filmmaking, um, which isn't to say there aren't great independent films still being made, you know, by people like Crispin Glover, uh, Asia Argento, uh, you know, Abel's still trooping it out. Um, but, but on a whole, I think that independent film is, is, is so loosely used now as a term. And, um, you know, a lot of these, these films that claim to be independent are, are working with Hollywood budgets and let it out and, and get it out. And I, I think we accomplished that pretty well on this one. <clears throat> working with a budget like this, I mean, um, you know, the budget literally came out of mine and Robert's pocket. And, um, you know, we really had to use use our heads, use our brains, and our, our creativity. And um, <laughs> the insanity exercises that we endured just to, uh, you know, kind of edit the film before we even edited it, you know, in our heads, um, was, was exhausting, but both exhilarating at the same time. It, it was very, um, I, I must have aged at least uh, 10 years, you know, knowledge-wise, uh, during the, the production of this film. Um, the, the things that I've experienced and, and um, just, you know, anything goes and, and, and the more, it, uh, you know, certain things you get and, and they, you just, they could have been scripted one way, they could have been um, written out one way, but, but when, when you see in that moment that this might work better, you, you got to just jump on it and get it and, um, have no fear about doing so, otherwise you're fucked, you're dead. You, sometimes I, I, I may not have gone all the way out, but on the whole, I think I did. I, I grabbed my balls and I just jumped into it. Um, and, uh, you know, it helps to have someone that it's, it's, it's there on, on your side, right there with you, and, you know, jumping off the same cliff. And, um, you know, this, this collaboration was just it was a blessing. When the possession takes hold of you and, and, and you feel it, you just you run with it or, or you die. And, um, you know, in this case, we ran with it, and we did almost die. You know, uh, I, there's several, you know, moments during the making of this film. I really thought I was I wasn't going to make it, and um, 
but it was a test, you know, it was a test of your, your stamina, your endurance, and, um, you know, it just went all out. <coughs> Think of, uh, what else here? I'll wrap up. I think that, that, that these days it's very rare to come across uh, filmmakers that are, are really willing to, to, you know, I mean, you, you know, you want to know the budget of this film. It's like, and, 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 and that's it, man. I mean, it, it, of course money is involved, but it's like very rarely do you find people that are willing to, to shed blood for, for the art form and, 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 and willing to, you know, risk their lives to just come up with something so pure and so, so truthful and, um, you know, it is extremely difficult, it is extremely tedious, you got to be willing to go all out or, or don't go at all and, um, you know, come across a lot of egos and, 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 and uh, individuals who are willing to settle and just say, you know, oh, you know, this will be fine this way or, or it'll be okay this way and then let's get out of it, but, um, you know, something doesn't work. Um, you got to go back. You got to make it work. Our, our whole thing during the making of this film was make it happen. Uh, we kept saying that to one another uh, as it progressed, and we did. You know, 